What is the European debt crisis? The failure of the euro, the currency that ties together 19 out of 28 European states in an interconnected economy, the downfall of a country can trigger the collapse of an entire continent and even of the whole world. An insight to the European Union. How did it happen? To understand the crisis of the Eurozone, we go back to the foundation of the European Union. For most of its history, Europe has been at war with itself, which made business across countries almost impossible. It was after World War II that European countries came together to avoid another catastrophe and to promote cooperation. Trade barriers such as tariffs and exchange rates came down and the idea of a unified European Union was brought into question. Finally, with the Maastricht Treaty, the dream became true. However, it was not until 1999 that a single currency was launched, the Euro. The countries that adopted it had to abandon their former currencies to give control to a new institution, the European Central Bank, in charge of regulating the monetary policy of the Eurozone. But what exactly is monetary policy and how does it differ from fiscal policy? Monetary policy is in charge of money supply and the interest rates at which countries can borrow money. A unified monetary policy meant that now countries such as Greece, which before was not very trustworthy to lenders, could now borrow as much money as it wanted and at the same interest rate as countries such as Germany, the biggest and strongest economy in Europe. On the other side, fiscal policy controls how much government collects on taxes and how much of this it spends. If the administration spends more than what it collects, this extra amount becomes deficit. How did this happen? Countries such as Greece, Italy and Portugal would then borrow money to increase growth and then borrow more money to pay for those previously made debt. Further, a real estate bubble was created in Spain and Ireland because of this extremely low rates on credit that the population enjoyed. However, this only became a problem in 2008 when the world entered an economic recession phase. This meant that creditors all over the world were not interested in borrowing money for such a small price when they knew there was a high chance of the debt to countries not paying. As a result, all economies that were based on borrowing debt collapsed, which in economic terms meant that income decreased together with a rise in unemployment. Also, the real estate bubble in Ireland and Spain bursted, leading to an economic crisis in both countries. Because countries would still borrow some money, although at a higher price, the debt-to-GDP ratio increased a lot, making their credit rating to be lowered and in the case of Greece, Ireland and Portugal to be considered junk. Short-term economic reforms As budget deficits rose across Europe, leaders had to decide how to heal the economy. If these failed at reducing the deficit and kept borrowing money, they would get higher interest rates, leading to more budget deficit and higher interest rates, and so on. In the short run, two possible solutions were available, austerity and Keynesian measures. Austerity is an economic policy employed to get rid of debt, typically used during recessions. It was imposed by Germany on countries which requested bailouts and it involved cuts in public spending and raises in taxes in order to reduce the deficit. Greece's third austerity package in 2010, for example, introduced cuts on public-owned companies, pension reforms and tax reforms. The objective? To save 38 billion in spending. The result? Fiscal deficit decreased from 10% to 2.5%. And the cost? Consumption plummeted, unemployment skyrocketed, and the economy shrank. Paul Krugman, a respected macroeconomist, claims that a return to non-Keynesian economics is not viable. Keynesian economists believe that in a period of recession, more government expenditures is needed in order to boost the economy in the short run. When austerity measures were implemented, instead of people spending more in the private sector to compensate for public spending cuts, they started to save for rainy days, creating less demand and deepening therefore the recession. This is Keynes' animal spirit. Here are a couple of Keynesian ideas that were suggested as solutions. Fiscal devaluation, plans to build multi-million euro projects and a decrease in the interest rate of the ECB. All these measures, also called shocks, are meant to increase spending, boosting aggregate demand and finally boosting the economy. Proposed long-term solutions for the Eurozone crisis. European Fiscal Union. In June 2012, developing on the president of the European Central Bank's proposal, 
the president of the Deutsche Bundesbank suggested the idea of increasing the integration between European countries in order to give the EU more power concerning the control over the budgets of the member countries. With this increased power of jurisdiction, the EU would have to take measures ranging from increases in taxation to cuts in budgets whenever countries found themselves in a situation of fiscal imbalance. Similarly, Angela Merkel recently has been appealing for a development in fiscal policy as well as political union in order to thrive Europe's potential and possibility. The European Bank Recovery and Resolution Authority During the first three years of the crisis, European banks managed to lose over 1 trillion euros. Shocked by this huge loss, the European Commission contributed approximately 4.5 trillion euros in state aid in order to help the banks out. This outstanding sum of money was raised by public guarantees on banking debt and taxpayer-funded recapitalizations. In fact, this action made many economists rethink about the debt and realize that Europe was suffering a banking crisis rather than a sovereign crisis. Later, in 2012, the European Commission decided to come up with a more efficient solution and came up with a framework that would effectively recover the bank situation. The aim was to point out the process and powers that would be required to guarantee that the banks of the EU member countries would be rescued. Each individual country would have the ability of forcing losses as a consequence of bank failure. Eurobonds Increasingly, the thought that Eurobonds is the ideal solution to solve the European debt crisis is coming to light. However, together with the contribution of financial and budgetary measures, the bonds will imply changes to be made in the European treaties and agreements. There are many different opinions as to whether the Eurobonds really are the best solution to solve the mess in Europe. Germany, for example, insists on the fact that this short-term solution is most probably going to hit the countries, benefiting now in the longer term, increasing the country's future liabilities. There are, of course, more measures and procedures that have been carried out so far in order to try to solve the European debt crisis, such as the European Monetary Fund. However, we sadly do not have enough time to come across all of the solutions and we would keep you here for longer than you would like.